Apparently I'm out of practice. That's why we should never take time off. Forget how to make a video. Anyway, this is a 2000, I think 16 Ford Flex. And the customer complaint is that it has blue brake rotors. At least that's what he was told when he took it in for an oil change. He took it to a Jiffy Lube or somewhere like that. And I guess they had a little, little look-see and they told him that his brake rotors in the rear are blue and that his brake pads are gone and that he needs an emergency brake job. So you can see, I've got quite a bit of dust here on the rim and the brake rotor is in fact discolored and I don't know if it'll show up on the camera but there is not much pad left I think they were I think they were right so let's peel the wheel off we'll get a closer look well the customer told me he tried to take the wheel off to inspect the brakes himself he couldn't get this wheel off pretty common problem in our area the aluminum wheel gets stuck on the hub Here's how you fix that. Sometimes it takes a pretty big hammer. What's interesting, and why we're making this video, is that this is a windback style caliper. So this arm right here is actually your parking brake. Inside the caliper there's a threaded section, looks basically like a bolt. And then behind the piston there's, for lack of a better word, a nut. And when you rotate the arm, the bolt pushes the nut away and it puts tension on the piston here, locks up your parking brake. They're pretty complicated inside these calipers are because there's also kind of a ratcheting mechanism that allows the parking brake thread to self-adjust as the pads get thinner and thinner because this arm only has so much stroke and I guess that what I'm getting at is there's a lot of variables here why this this caliper is not not releasing could be an internal failure in the caliper could be a problem with the hose the flex hose here seen that happen before could just be the piston itself is seized up. Could be that the pads are seized in the abutment clips. I don't think it's gonna be that the, the pins are seized, that the caliper is not floating because it's equally worn on both sides of the rotor. Now you can tell everything's gotten super hot. So all the kind of vibration damping material on the inside of the pads is melted off. It's all discolored, all the paint on the rotor is discolored. So she's been dragging, that's for sure. So with the windback style caliper, you can't, you cannot retract the piston fully without rotating it, but it should have a little bit. And it has nothing. So I think that's gonna be our problem. Of course, the other big problem in our area is nobody ever uses the parking brake or emergency brake or whatever you wanna call it. So most of the time they're seized up. See, it's working, it's pulling the caliper over. But I don't think that's the problem. Well, the rotor doesn't look too bad to me. It's stamped right here, minimum thickness 10 millimeters. And it's over 11 millimeters right now. So we've got more than one millimeter, over 40 thousandths we can machine off. So we should be able to clean that up on the brake lathe. We need one caliper and one set of brake pads and we should be good to go. Okay, I'll see what's out there for parts. Put together a quote, see what the customer wants to do. It's a little more complicated to replace these Weinbach style calipers, but I think we can handle it. Okay, customer says, Get her done. Well, that's what we're going to do. Oh, man. All 
I don't know if we'll be able to get this parking brake cable off without There you go. Jeepers, on the struggle bus today. Yeah, I'm thinking they got the good out of that outside pad. This particular customer chose to go with all original equipment Motorcraft parts. So we got Motorcraft pads and a brand new Motorcraft caliper. It's not a reman, it's brand new. It does have a core charge, of course, they're gonna rebuild the old one. Looks like the ticket. Now keep in mind with the Motorcraft, it does not come with the bracket, so. If you have problems with your caliper slide pins being frozen, you'll need to get the bracket separately or go with the aftermarket one, I believe, comes with the bracket. Usually they do anyway. Well, this one looks pretty good. Just put a little extra grease on the pins. For whatever reason, the new abutment clips are a different design than the old clips, but I believe they'll work just fine. Everybody always freaks out if I don't put grease on the inside of the clip. Well, there it is. Get ready to smash that thumbs down button. I actually have this fancy little tool right here that works great for the regular banjo bolt style brake hose. 
just a couple of rubber caps with a spring and it clips over that banjo fitting. Keeps you from dripping all over. I'll see if I can find a link. I believe it's made by S-U-R-R or possibly it's made by American Grease Stick, one of the two. I don't know, Ford, do you think you got enough threads on this thing? Good night. People always flip out if I don't show every single step, but I did clean up the face of the hub. I actually used a needle scaler to get down here into the corner and a flat wheel to get the outside. It really wasn't too bad. That's fluid film. And I suppose people will freak out because I, I turned the rotor instead of replacing it. But now these are the original rotors as far as I can tell and it's been my experience that the best brake rotors you can buy are the ones that came originally on your car. Even if you go back to the manufacturer and buy replacement OEM parts, they're not as good as the originals that came on your car. So, so if you can save them, I think that's time well spent. A little bit of Loctite on the caliper bracket bolts. These caliper brackets are symmetric or they're, they're identical from side to side. They have the same part number. Grab your torque wrench, torque those to factory spec. Like so, click. Click. With these Weinbach style calipers, at least one of the brake shoes is going to have a pin like this that engages with the piston on the caliper. That needs to go to the inside. But in this case, we have the pin on both shoes, so it doesn't matter where they go. At this point, we will need our diligent, hard-working, lovely assistant. Mm, there you go. You got it that last time. And the trusty puff. We need some help. Okay. Pretty please. Am I having to climb in? You will have to climb in. Of course I will. Okay. Don't Am scratch I the... Am brakes? Yeah, don't scratch the door, please. I'm working on it. Perfect. All right, leave the, just leave the door open. That's easier said than done. Now for the fun part. These wind back calipers can be a pain in the biscuits to bleed. So I've got the bleeder cracked loose. We're gonna have our lovely assistant gently pump the brakes, please. Slow, don't, just don't push that pedal all the way down. Oh, I already broke that rule. All right, well, it's not a Honda. We should be okay. Pump, pump, pump. Oh, whoa, okay. All right, so we've got brake fluid in the caliper. Now, here's the trick. What the Ford service information is gonna tell you to do is bleed the brakes like normal and then pump this parking brake lever five times, then bleed the brakes again and repeat that until you get rid of all the bubbles. 
but you can do that until the cows come home sometimes and still not get them get them really where you're happy with them so we're going to use the chrysler method which i found works pretty well this is our normal caliper wind back tool this one's made by sunex or it's branded by sunex i think pretty much everybody makes or brands the same one now it has both the left hand and right hand threaded uh, whatever you want to call it mandrel or arbor or whatever anyway you're gonna set this guy so that there's a gap between this plate and the end of the caliper that's about equal to the thickness of the outside brake shoe you know the wear material so call it I don't know 10 millimeters or whatever and now we're gonna ask our lovely assistant to pump the brakes again slowly Oh, keep going. You're doing fine. One more time. Okay, stop there. Now we're gonna crack the bleeder, the bleed screw open one turn, or half a turn, or whatever you feel comfortable with. And then we're gonna wind it back. should be far enough and you want to make sure that your notches and your piston are perpendicular to the the bolts that attach it oh now we can tighten up our bleed screw for now grease on the contact surfaces don't really need it with this style of brake pad but might as well go for that belt and suspenders approach a little bit of Loctite on these caliper side pin bolts click all right young lady can you push the pedal down please uh, just pump it up a couple times. Keep pumping. Okay, now hold down. Okay, let up. Hold down. Let up. Hold down. Okay, how's it feel? Okay, that's it. Let's see if we can get this parking brake back together. They have these big boy cans of brake clean on sale, so I snatched a few up. Makes it a little bit easier to administer the proper amount of brake clean. Perfect. Now before you button things up, swing inside here and just make sure that the little pin in the brake pad is actually engaged in the slot in the caliper. You don't want that thing, you don't want the piston pushing on the end of the pin, bad things will happen.
Now, if you live somewhere that's really nasty, you can put a little bit of anti-seize right around this flange or rim or whatever you want to call it, just to keep it from holding on so tight. But we are going to rotate the tires, or I am rotating the tires, I should say. While it's here. Take this beast for a ride. It's kind of weird cars. At least I think so. Am I right that they're based on some kind of a Volvo chassis? Maybe I'm wrong about that. Well, it stops. That's a good sign. Well, we didn't make it very far. Hear that? So the caliper hose is actually hitting the back side of the tire. For whatever reason, it must be kinked or twisted or something. Oh, that looks better. I just cracked the nut loose here and then popped this clip off and I could turn the hose and get the kink out of it. So, no big deal. Should have done that to start with, but you know, in our climate, you don't, you don't generally crack things loose unless you absolutely have to, especially when it comes to brake lines. All right, folks, I think we got it. Nice and quiet. Stops good. Pulls a little to the right, but then again, this road also leans a little to the right, if you know what I'm saying. I think we're good. Yeah, 49,535 miles. It's already had front pads and rotors, and now it's had rear pads and a caliper. That seems a little excessive to me, but maybe I'm out of line. My Ford pickup truck, is, it's got 170 uh, something thousand miles on it. It still has the original front rotors. And I think it's only had one set of front pads. Of course, that's manual transmission, so it's a little easier on the, a little easier on brakes. I'm thinking this car had an owner that was hard on the pedal. Dog days of summer, hop up. All right, folks, that's how I replace a brake caliper with an integrated parking brake mechanism. I think that's what it's called. Curious how you guys do it, or if I'm the only one who ever has trouble getting these to bleed. And all the OEMs use these, this style of caliper, and I think they're pretty much the same internally. I've never really taken one apart, so I don't know that for sure, but I think they all work on the same principle. So the method that I showed here should work pretty much universally. And I've used this method on, for sure used it on Ford, GM, and Chrysler, and not had any issues. So it's my preferred method now. But if there's something better out there, I'd, I'd love to know about it. As far as these windback calipers go, I mean, they've been around forever. And it's nice to have this windback tool. Like I said, this one's branded by SunX. I don't know who actually makes it. Uh, this is the whole kit here. So it's got your left hand thread, your right hand thread and then all the different adapters. And most of these I've never used. This one here is the most common one. And then before I had that, and you can get these cheesy tools like this at any auto parts store. Uh, but before that, I just used a pair of needle nose pliers and uh, stick the pliers in the little groove there and twist and push and it'll retract just fine. As long as there's nothing wrong, which there definitely is something wrong with this caliper. I tried to retract it using the tool and it's it's frozen right up. So something internally has seized or corroded or something, I don't know. And you know the brake pad. She smoked. He was just about to have some serious metal on metal issues. So I'm glad he caught it when he did. We were able to reuse the, the rotor and it really wasn't too bad of a job. Yeah, thanks guys for watching. I know it's not super interesting. You know, brake jobs are kind of humdrum and all mechanics, you know, do a lot of brake jobs. So they're, they're probably bored of watching them, but thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you next time.